Hello there and welcome to a video for the pre-algebra math UC curriculum. This is lesson nine and if you've been following along you may notice that this is a different format for the video and that's because I can't find a lesson nine video from last year when I made all the other ones. So I'm fixing it and making one now. Lesson nine is a very pre-algebra, algebra kind of concept. We are being asked to solve for unknowns specifically by using the additive inverse and I'll explain what that means in a little bit but let's just look at this equation this is algebra you've been doing things like this for a really long time actually they may not have used letters like X uh, they might have used other things like just a blank or a question mark or I like to use smiley faces but you know you could use whatever you want where that X is but what we're being asked is hey, what plus 5 equals 12? And so hopefully, whether you know how to solve an equation or not yet, you can think through that and be like, okay, what do I need to add 5 to that gives me 12? And you can come up with 7. And in algebra, what we do is we'll write x equals 7. And so then I draw your attention to the relationship, right, between these three numbers and that relationship right it, one way of saying it is that well 7 plus 5 gives us 12 that's what we literally just thought about but another way to think of it is that 12 which was the answer if I m subtract 5 from that I get 7 now why is that helpful because we have ways of solving equations so that we can do these like these same set of rules every single time and get the right answer and end up not actually having to think a ton about it so if you're into that sort of thing you can be happy about that okay an equation is a way of stating that two expressions so this is a, a thing that can be confusing or frustrating at first if it's just like if what we have is just a 2x and there's no equal sign that's an expression um, or if we just have the number 5, we actually can call that an expression as well. But when we put an equal sign in between it, that turns it into an, an equation. So like I just said, we can tell that we have an equation when there is an equal sign. And so if you're looking at a problem and it doesn't have an equal sign, it does not make sense for you to try to find x um, because we don't have enough information. A variable is a letter used in math and science to represent something unknown. Or something we want to be able to give lots of values to. So most commonly, initially, when we're doing pre-algebra and algebra, is that we're trying to find something that we don't know, but whoever made the problem knew. And so then, you know, we can find what is unknown to us by using algebra rules. But the broader implication of using variables is that we can set things up so that uh, if we're modeling a real world scenario, we can change out what x might be to see what will make what we want to have happen. For instance, if our goal is to increase our profit and our business, you know, we can make x be the price that we're going to uh, charge for whatever we make. And so by being able to compare what is my profit at a dollar versus what is my profit at a hundred dollars, you know, you can make smart business decisions, hopefully. So that's, that's what a variable is. The additive inverse of a number a is the number that when added to a gives you zero. So the additive inverse of eight is negative 8 because if I do 8 plus negative 8 I get 0. The additive inverse of negative 3 is positive 3 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So today's equations are going to have us end up um, using this idea of an additive inverse basically so that we can move what's around x uh, so that it ends up just being x equals something. Before we do that, there's some ways that we can visualize equations. Um, these top two that are, you know, cool animals and things like that, um, you might see these actually at some point pop up on social, a social media feed, 
And usually it's because they're trying to like make people feel dumb and like they got it wrong, um, which, you know, that's a thing. But obviously that's not how we're gonna do it. But if you, if you take a moment to kind of look at these and try to figure them out, this is algebra, but because they're cute animals, it is a little, it, it may seem a little easier, like that it's saying, okay, this times this is 100, and it's the same thing in both spots. So that, I don't know what that is. It's a really cool looking triceratops. I think it's a triceratops. Okay, so each triceratops is 10. And so then one of the things we can do here, and this is not what we're actually doing on the homework. I just think it's a fun visualization exercise. If those are 10, then it's also 10 here because we didn't know what it was, but now we do. So now everywhere that that happens, it's a 10. So 10 plus dragon equals 19. So what does that mean dragon is? Well, to get from 10 to 19, we need to add nine. So the dragon is nine. And then this next one, two raccoons plus nine equals 13. So this adds a level of trickiness because we need to think, how do I get from nine to 13? Which I can do 13 minus nine and get four. But there's two raccoons that together have a value of four. So what is the value of a single raccoon? So that raccoon is equal to two. Then we have two triceratops. So we don't just need 10 right here, we need two times 10. And that means that we're gonna, to find this answer, have to do two plus two times 10. Two times 10 is 20, plus two is 22. So were you able, were you able to get that without my help? Um, it's fine if you didn't, but you know, these can be kind of fun. I don't know, this next one, it might be easier. We've got two panda bears add to get 10. So each panda would have to be five. Then that means this one's five and this one's five. Five plus owl equals seven. So that's seven minus five is two. And so that also has to be two. Now our triceratops is back. Triceratops plus five is three. And yeah, this one actually seems way easier unless I ended up miss, missing a complicatedness or a trick. This is three plus five, which is eight. Those are a way that you can represent equations visually. You also, though, can you know, write an equation. So this isn't really writing it visually, but these are actual equations that we could solve. And below them is how we might use um, algebra tiles or manipulatives or things like that to actually vis visualize what is happening. And the key to how this works is that these rectangles that we have are not tin blocks or we don't know if they are. They are an unknown length and that's because we don't know what x is. So in this situation, our equation, uh, this is our x, this is three because there's three boxes, this is seven since there's seven boxes. So to visualize getting an answer for x, well, we need to think the three on the left, I need to take those away from this side, make them not be there, and so in order for us to do that, I need to also take three away from the seven. So I need to go, that goes away, that goes away, that goes away, as I take this away, this away, and this away. It doesn't matter which three. But now, if, if we're saying, hey, this is no longer there, this is no longer there, and now it's a four, what we have left is this x rectangle, and then it equals four. So that's a way to visually you know, see how to solve it. Now we can do that even with more complicated ones like 3x plus one equals 2x plus four. Because we can say um, this one right here, if I want that to go away, we're gonna use basically the additive inverse. I'm gonna say if that's a plus one, then I need to take away one from the other side. So I'm gonna take away one. But we can also do that with x's because even though we don't know what x is, we know that every time there's an x, it's the same thing. So if there are three rectangles on this side and two rectangles on this side, what we can do is say, well, let me take out uh, or take away as many x's as I can. 
since there's two of them here, that's the most I can take away is two because each of these has at least two. And so I use the word take away, that means subtract, right? So essentially what we're doing is we're taking this 2x, which is a positive, we're subtracting 2x over to the other side, and that gives us just a single x right here, which is just 1x or x. And we also, the first thing I did was actually the subtract 1. So that 4 minus 1 is 3. So that's some visualization to help you out with, um, you know, what's actually happening when you're trying to do all this algebraically, algebraically and stuff. Now, let's look at some examples, and I'm pretty sure that I made these similar to what you'll see on the homework. So lots of words, but I think they're the same in each one. Solve for x using the additive inverse. Check your work by substituting the answer in the original equation. And I don't have the book right in front of me, but this might be a thing where like, they want you to do the problem on the left side and they want you to check it on the right side. I could be wrong though. Um, so just, you know, that might be a thing. Okay, if I have x minus four equals eight, I can think about the answer. Or, like the problem says, I can use the additive inverse. So what I would do is say, I don't like that this negative four is right here. So I want it to go away. And the way I make it go away is I use the opposite sign. So instead of a minus 4, I'm going to add 4. But here's the one of the most important things to know about algebra. When you do something on one side of an equation, you have to do that same thing on the other side. Otherwise, your equation is no longer valid. Um, so if I add 4 over here so that this becomes 0, I also have to add it over here. And what's nice about the simple ones like this is maybe you knew from the start that it needed to be 12 because 12 minus 4 is 8. But now we've done it the algebra way and we can see that, okay, it's the same thing. And in fact, in order to think through what minus 4 e is equal to 8, one of the ways to do that is in your head to do 8 plus 4. Um, there might be other ways that you can think through it, but essentially that's how you do it. Example two, oh wait, I didn't check. So checking your work for equations like this is you put what you got for x where the x originally was, and you fill in the rest of the equation, and you're asking yourself, does 12 minus four, which is the left side, does that really equal eight? And if the answer is yes, then you've done it right. If the answer is no, then you did it wrong, and you need to try again. Example two, x plus one equals negative five. The additive inverse of plus one, or the opposite of plus one, is to subtract one. So I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. Now this one might be tricky for some of us to just do in our head because of the five being negative. Um, and the light's on a motion sensor and I have not apparently moved enough to, for it to know I'm here. Um, so minusing one makes that go away so that we're left with x. And then negative five minus one you know, if you're not super strong on negatives yet, that might seem like a really tough question. So I like to think of this as negative five plus negative one, because then when I add two negatives together, they make a bigger negative number. So this is negative six. And then I can check by saying negative six plus one equals negative five. Is that true? And yes, it is. If I add 1 to negative 6, it makes it be 1 less negative, which is negative 5. Now, I don't actually really like that the Matthew C lesson progression um, does it this way, but we also have equations that look like this. And we did one similar to this earlier, um, but we are actually going to have to use two additive inverses here because we want the x's to be together and hopefully to just have one of them. And then we want the numbers to be together and those to be on opposite sides. My algebra teacher or pre-algebra teacher used the analogy of it being like a fence and you want the cows on one side and the goats on the other or something like that. Like we wanna separate out these two different things, x's and numbers. And so to do that, we use the additive inverse. It does not matter which one you move to which side, but I can tell you that the intention of the lesson is that you 
take whichever one, if you use the additive inverse, you'll end up with a positive, and most of the time a positive one. What I mean by that is if I subtract this x from both sides, then this cancels, because x minus x is 0, even though I don't even know what x is. 2x minus 1x is an x. And so then we could say, okay, now I have x minus 6 equals 3. Then we'll use the additive inverse for the negative 6 to move it, so plus 6. x equals 9 is my answer. Let me check. 2 times 9 minus 6 is 18 minus 6, which is 12. Does that equal wait, 9 plus 3, which is so much easier to do, 12? Yes, it does equal, so we got it right. This last one is weird, or might look weird, because it it doesn't have a number on the left side other than it doesn't it just has the negative three x so still the same approach of our x's need to get together and in general in algebra if we have a situation like this where one of the sides just has x that's typically the side we want to get our x's on because if I I can add three x to both sides but then this side is going to end up being zero and I'm going to have to actually do more work to get x by itself so instead I want to add four x to both sides and get x equals 7 because this is 4x minus 3x which leaves us with an x. Now let's check our answer. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. Negative 4 times 7 plus 7 is negative 28 plus 7. Negative 28 plus 7 is negative 21. Those equal so we got it. And that's all of the notes. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching.